I do believe we are here. We are super excited to be here. Whether you're watching this live or watching the replay, I want to say welcome, welcome. I'm Carolyn J. Carpenter. And we have our second in our three-part training today. And I'm very, very, very excited. So you can put comments. Um, if you want your name, uh, here, let me show you what I'm talking about. If you want your name to appear like, see, that's where you can get your handouts for today. <laughs> But as people make comments, we will put your name up there. Um, you might need to just click on StreamYard.com in order to make that happen. But just wanted to say hello, almost like good morning, but I guess it's officially afternoon. And um, here we go. We are going to do a live training right this moment. So um, I'm Carolyn J. Carpenter. I am one of the founders with Douglas Shaner, my fearless partner of Hollywood Gatekeepers. We are readers. We have been reading for a really long time. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that today. I'm just kind of making sure people are finding us before I get started. Um, so I am going to share my screen because we have, we're very fancy. We have PowerPoint, we have all kinds of stuff today. So I can share my screen. I'm living proof that you do not have to be tech savvy to be a reader <laughs> as you see me share my screen. So let me check on over here. And okay, I see that we're going. <laughs> okay, so I'm just making sure that I can see all y'all. Um, I have two screens today, very fancy. Um, so I'll be checking that out as well. So here you go. There it is. Hi there. Well, hello, now I'm seeing everybody. Hey there. So like, for instance, um, hey, Elizabeth and Mickey, now that I get that, and Jan, so funny. And Cher and Joy is here, hooray. And Scotland is listening on her phone and my fearless partner is here as well. So we'll go ahead and get started because we have a lot to cover. I'm very excited, I get so excited. I, it's, I woke up this morning, <laughs> such a geek. But I do, and then watching, seeing your comments and seeing a couple people share the subtext training, which I absolutely love when people share stuff because it's like, that means it's resonating. Um, Hey Anna, or Anna, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Um, it means it's resonating, which is what this is all about, right? So I'm gonna, I feel like just diving in and explaining things, but I'm like, <laughs> well, I'm good, I'm awake and ready. So let's get this party started, shall we? So just, you know, as we get going here, if for some reason things start freezing, <laughs> uh, anyway, if things start freezing. And also I just have to a little preface, I have a little mama um, Brad moment. My son is in college and he sent me a text or an email that his for one of his professors sent him asking if he could find a way to post and uh, spread this current thing that he just wrote. My boy, he's a writer. He's been, he's been denying that for, I was like, see, you are a writer. <laughs> You're, it's like, you will be a doctor. No, but he's just so expressive. And so I texted, of course I texted Doug, hey, Mama Brad, so I'm super proud of him. Anyway, enough about me, let's move on. So if things go right, just, you know, come on over, just comment, you're already in the Facebook group, but we are streaming this live to YouTube and to Facebook, our page. So if you're watching us there, you need to come on over to the Facebook group because if you want the handouts and whatnot that we give, you need to be part of the tribe. We're in here because we want to reward the people that are in the group being active. So um, we're super, super exciting. Yay, I'm glad. Oh, that ooh, makes me so happy that I upped your writing. That's awesome. Do you pronounce that share? Shree? How do you pronounce that? Um, so comment in the chat if you're having trouble. Help each other if someone's having sound issues or whatever. And then definitely just go to the Facebook group if you're really stuck. So let's get this party started, shall we? Isn't that a pretty picture? I love that picture. <laughs> Did you see it? So to buffer or not to buffer, to make this work more smoothly, focus. We need to focus our brain and our computer brains right here, in case you didn't know, and our computer by closing out those extra windows and silencing your social media, closing down your emails, checking that I did that, so that you know our computers have trouble focusing when we have a bajillion tabs open. And I'm guilty of that, Doug can attest. And our brains don't focus as well either when we have a bajillion tabs open when we're checking into it and doing a bunch of things. So let's, we're going to be about an hour depending on how many questions there are. Um, we'll, we'll go about an hour and then we'll take questions. So 
she says with confidence. I have a lot I want to cover today. So if you do have questions, <clears throat> you can jot them down. That's why we gave you the masterclass manual. Um, we're going to give you a link to that right about now so that you can download that if you didn't get it already. Use that to jot down your questions. And then if for some reason you have what we call a way home or like on the way home or at later today, you're like, oh, what about this or that? Just drop them in the Facebook group. I'm seeing you do that. I'm scrolling in there. I don't comment so much in the Facebook group because I don't want it to be about what I think. I want it to be about what you think. And so I do the trainings. And so we scroll through, Doug and I scroll through. He he will answer things in the comments. We've got Joy and Shri. They're on our team and they're here as well. They'll answer comments. We have our screen readers. Raise your hand if you're a screen reader, Peggy Smith. Just so happens. Um, pretend the kids are in a dark black hole and you can't hear them. <laughs> That's Peggy's advice. So she's a screen reader. So, you know, we have a lot of people that can help you out within the group. So, I, but I scroll through, I look for your comments and then I choose things that I think will help everyone as a whole. And that's what we talk about in here. So if for some reason later you're like, oh, I wish we would have talked about such and such, so-and-so, who's and what's, just put it into the group. So masterclass manual, you want to throw that up there, Doug? Because like, <laughs> out of my mouth and on... <laughs> That's my partner. He's got it. So you can download that to use for your questions. So we've already had one session. So you can scroll through inside the Facebook group if you want to see that again or, you know, rewatch. I would actually recommend that you rewatch it. Um, there will be things that you missed for sure. And it also depends on the space you're in. So if you're if you're thinking about one story, it's going to resonate in a different way. So definitely hand raise because Peggy is a screen reader. Um, we're going to do a little recap of what we talked about last time, just to kind of remind you, kind of see in case you did miss it, kind of where, why, what we're building on here. So basically, we talked a little bit about who we are. We are readers. We started the screen reader program. Um, we have Hollywood Gatekeepers where we do free trainings every single week about being a reader, all of the things about being a reader. So we did that. We created this screen reader program. And so we've got people in here. That's why this group is so great because we have so many people in here that are being trained or have been trained and are certified as readers within our screen reader program. So they can give you really good feedback about what from a reader's perspective, which is a little bit different uh, um, from anyone else. And if you think that you're going to do your own movie and you won't need a reader, well, yesterday someone sent us their script because we're thinking of potentially helping them produce it. They're doing it themselves. They're raising the money and everything. So we're just, you know, we're always looking at projects and we're going to talk about one in a moment. It's like you still will have people reading your script, even if you produce it yourself, because you're going to need to get actors. You're going to need to get all the things that you need for it. And some of those people will have a reader. They won't read it themselves. So getting your script past a reader is really important. And we had so many writers in this group say, hey, you know, how do I write a screenplay that we decided, okay, let's Let's talk about this. And that's what the discovery is, is the hidden gem. So let's talk about this in terms of if you are a writer, how does this work? And so within our screen reader program, we actually added the writer's room. So we have a lot of our screen readers are also writers. And so they are submitting their, their scripts into the writer's room within our program. And then people that are learning how to be readers are practicing on those scripts, like Peggy. It just so happens I'm going to pick on her today. She can handle it. Um, she wrote a coverage, so she's practicing. We don't read the scripts in the writer's room, typically. Um, we let the readers do that, and that's it's a great, it's working beautifully, where writers are getting their script covered, co readers are practicing coverage, it's awesome. And so a coverage, if you don't know, we covered this last time, it is basically like a book report. So a reader and a lot of different, you know, Agents, lawyers, managers, producers, directors, actors, casting directors, costumers, production designers, a lot of people that people, anyone that's getting a lot of submissions of screenplays, some of them will use a reader, even if it's their spouse, you know, to kind of weed out projects. There's just too much material, especially for producers. They just don't have time to go through it all. So that's where the reader steps in. So that's what we're training people to do. And one of the things that we talk a lot um, is, it's he's bouncing. <laughs> Oh, Wi-Fi, I thought she was excited and dancing. Um, so yeah, it's a win-win, exactly. So um, we we train our readers to really look for the hidden gem in a script. Even if the script has some problems to it, sometimes there's something that really, really works. Well, Peggy read the script of Mickey Yell, one of our writers who's also a reader, and she covered it. And she actually passed on the script but found a hidden gem. 
Meanwhile, Doug and I were working with a production company on a horror film. We saw her coverage and we decided rather than write our own horror film to develop the script instead, because we are always looking for opportunities for all y'all. So that is a very nutshell version of finding the hidden gem. Go back. I explain it much more in the first one if you haven't seen that. So um, hi, Cindy, nice to see you. And Brack, good to see you, greatest name ever, by the way. Um, so we talked about that. We also talked about how do you get started if you do have a screenplay or, or how do you get started, I'm um, sorry, how do you get started to write your screenplay? Not That's later. How do you get started once you have your screenplay finished? But there's starting and then there's starting. We're always starting and restarting, right? So how do you get started with your screenplay? So we just talked about kind of the different ways that you can get started and how so many people tell you what you need to do and how to do it. There's so many authorities out there, right? And so I just love this quote. I just decided to do it, period. I mean, that's Jessica. Um, you'll see here, she's gonna do a live read for us pretty soon that you guys get to visit and watch. It's gonna be cool. But we talked about how we, the, the origins of Hollywood gatekeepers in terms of speed of implementation, which is something that we learned from my hero, Evan Pagan, who's a marketing expert, but is also trained me. I'm certified as a coach with his program and he's amazing. And he talks about the speed of implementation that it's very, and he, he really, he like gives away like huge prizes for people to implement because he's trying to get you in the habit of just trying stuff because there's, the best way to learn is to try and there's no such thing as failure. It's just, you didn't, didn't go out the way that you thought it would, it went a different way. So then it's like, well, how do I build on that different way or shift or whatever it might be? So just getting started, the speed of implementation is so important. And when we decided to do Hollywood gatekeepers, we thought about it for a couple of weeks, a couple of days. <laughs> really was like less than a week that we thought about before we tried something. We just started the, the Facebook group and tried. That's what we're doing here. We're, we're seeing if we want to do this, these finished workshops by trying them. We, I don't know. Is it working? We just thought we would try and see, you know, how can we get information across to help as many writers as possible? So we're just trying stuff. This whole pop-up Facebook is an experiment. And that's, you know, we are walking the walk of the things that we preach for sure. And there's so many opportunities. We talked a lot about that last time. We're going to talk about that more on Friday, actually. Um, and then, you know, I love this. Someone in the, po in the group posted this. I hope this experience gives me what I need to finish my screenplay. It's about as simple as that. We hope so too, Robert. That's exactly why we're here. And so we talked a little bit too about where you can find stories, you know, that you can look in your his in the history of the world, of the universe. You can also look in the universe, history of the universe. <laughs> Someone write that. And then not just the history of the world, history of the universe. Okay. Isn't that the big bang theory? <laughs> Sorry. Um, so you know, we talked about you thinking about your first film and how did that inspire you? Like, what was the thing that inspired you to be a writer? We talked about looking, reading, listening, being very aware of the world around you because just like that, you know, ideas can spark from anywhere, really being, you know, aware of all of that. Um, so the black hole, thank you, Brad. Would you write that one? Go write that one. You have your assignment. And then we talked about kind of how to put that all together. And really, we talked about, did I say it on here? I did not. So we talked about knowing yourself. So everyone's saying, and you see it in the script too, here's what you need to do. You need to go, you know, you need to, even with, you know, well, I'm not going to go down that path right now. But, even, you know, with all of the different advice that we're giving, it's like there's so many ways that people are going, you need to do it this way, you need to do that. Well, yeah, all of those ways are possible. So it's up to you to know yourself and know which way will you actually do. So if someone says, you gotta write a treatment, will you, will you really write a treatment? And actually I've never once as a reader been given a treatment to read, just FYI. But some people need the treatment to spark, you know, they're, they're used to writing short stories. And so in order to make the transition from short, short story to screenplay, they'll write a treatment because that's kind of in between. Totally different skill set and medium than writing a screenplay. Just. FYI. So it's like if you can write a treatment and a short story, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can write it, can write a screenplay. And actually now we're seeing, I didn't even go down this, we can do a whole thing on this, is pitch decks. And that's like a visual, it's almost like a comic book kind of, or a slideshow of a screenplay idea. And to me, and some people draw it out sort of like a storyboard in a way. And a pitch deck is like, here's my story. Here's what I'm thinking. It's a great way to pitch a story. And we're going to do a whole nother thing on Pitch Fest. But it's a great way to kind of tell a story. However, it doesn't show that you can write like at all. As a matter of fact, it's about as far away. You can draw or you can graphic design. Awesome. 
don't know if that means you can write. So it's kind of a funny one to me, but it's such a visual medium. And we actually have a producer that's fundraising right now for us for a film that we're working on. And he wanted something. I'm like, well, we've got, you know, we're working on the script. He's like, well, no, could you have something visual? <laughs> it's like, because so it's such a visual industry, right? But you still need to back that up with, you know, writing. There's that part too. So really knowing yourself, really trusting yourself. And I love Doug came up with this, hire your higher self. Like, you know, you know, you're all smart. You're Everybody in here is wicked smart. Like, it's not about... It's, it's more emotional IQ than intelligence. It's more about really trusting and knowing yourself and picking the thing that works. And someone even posted this, like, oh, I should have wrote your name now because I just loved it because they were like, oh, thank goodness. I was I thought I had to do my three by five cards or whatever. And it's like, no, if, yeah, if they help you do that, if, if you want to figure out your end first, if that's what works for you, Doug and I found it really helps with us because we're partners that it focuses us in the same direction so that we don't skew off from each other. So having the ending in mind really helps us. But sometimes when I'm writing on my own, I don't know where it's going to go. I want to, I want the journey and the exploration. So you really, it's so subjective, just like screenplays. And we went down this path of, you know, think about a movie that you love that everybody else hates, or think about a movie that you just can't stand and you don't know why everybody loves it, right? It's so subjective. So know yourself really like do voice memos, do journaling, just like the subtext exercise we did yesterday. I really am a firm believer in, you know, and we're going to talk about this more later about you knowing yourself is going to make your screenplay like a bajillion times better. Do I use bajillion too much? I use bajillion and basically. <laughs> now, drinking game, every time I say basically and definitely <laughs> and bajillion, ooh, we're going to be so drunk. So recap of last week's training session. So we have a link for you to just gonna throw that up there. And um, yeah, so Mickey just writes without an outline. Totally fine. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think it may have been you. Was it you that wrote that on about the three by five? <laughs> so yeah, find what works for you, right? I have to put this on there, that's so awesome. So um, Doug has a link to, the, to yesterday's training in case um, you did, or not yesterday, but Monday. Um, <laughs> the drive myself crazy with the cards. <laughs> I have to post that because it's so dang cool. Um, so uh, we have a link to all of the handouts because we're going to give you more handouts um, as we go today. So we have the links to last time in case for some reason you didn't get it. But I highly, highly suggest that you go back and watch. And also, because you need the secret words, the secret word. Are we ready? <laughs> Did you guys see the post of my dad on Gretchen Marks? So dang cute. So cute. Okay, here we go. You ready? Am I ready? The secret word is Chewbacca. Did you get that? <laughs> the secret word is Chewbacca. Doug chose him. <laughs> Throw my partner under the bus. I don't know what Chew Chewbacca has to do with, with anything. <laughs> but save the secret word. It's a great screenplay, right? Save your secret. You don't need to post it. Last time everybody's like posting the secret word. We're like, I know the secret word. Chewbacca. <laughs> There's Chewbacca. I got it. <laughs> I got the secret word. No, it's for you to save for later. <laughs> we were cracking up about that later. So save the secret word. You're going to need it next week. Uh, it's Baca. It's Baca, baby. <laughs> okay, moving right along. So here we go. So what are we going to talk about today, Carolyn? Well, what are we going to talk about nuts? <laughs> and not just me and not just Doug. Doug has been putting sound effects in the podcast. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast, I know I'm, you know, technically I'm not supposed to tell you to subscribe to other things when you're in here, but I can't help myself. It's awesome. He does put a in the podcast. Anyway, all the gatekeepers now on iTunes, um, but don't leave. Remember, we're all focusing right now. Absolutely a film word, Chewbacca. What am I talking about? Right, Shree? Absolutely. So the nuts and the bolts. But we're going to start with the nuts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Now focus because we're serious here. It's a serious business writing. So here we go. You ready? And you'll be able to watch this later. And wait for it. <laughs> we have a handout. <laughs> I know this is going to be shocking. So here they are. One minute per page. Screenplays are one minute per page. So a 90 page screenplay is a 90 page, 90 minute movie. And that is a great, it's an awesome way to judge so that you can see right away. So like when someone hands me a script and I go, oh, I'm like, oh yeah, that's a four hour movie. It's not gonna, 
I'm not going to cut it. Or when they go, Wait, I'm like, um, <laughs> yeah, that's a short film. So it is like literally one minute per page. Now, the minute I say three act structure, people go, what about blah, blah? That's exactly how they sound. Blah, blah. Um, yeah, we don't create, we don't. Um, uh, knowing the three act structure, now, all of these nuts and bolts and rules and rules and rules that we're going to do next after nuts and bolts and do's and don'ts, <laughs> nuts and bolts, rules, 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 do's and, do's and don'ts, all of that falls under the umbrella of know all of this stuff and then play and break it. But if you don't, it's very obvious, I can tell in two seconds, when someone doesn't know they're breaking a rule as opposed to when someone knows that they're breaking a rule, it's very obvious when in a screenplay for a reader. Keep in mind, readers read, 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 read all day. So they can spot stuff. So. Three act structure, understanding the three act structure. Act one is the setup. And those first 10 pages, it is true, are very, very important. And a lot of people talk about readers only read the first 10 pages. Yeah, that's true of some readers. That's not true of the readers that I know, they'd be so fired. And I've heard um, other, other readers on podcasts and things talk about this. It's like, no, their job, they're getting paid to read your screenplay. So most readers that I know that are passionate about what they're doing, they read the whole thing. Now, when you read a screenplay that's super predictable and um, you know, is easy to read in that way, not, that's not necessarily a good thing, you can read it really quickly. There is a thing called a 30-10 or a 10-30, meaning that they just read the first 10 pages or, and last 30 or vice versa. Um, but most readers that are worth their salt don't do that. But those first 10 pages do that. What does happen, and I have done this, is when I have 25 scripts I need to get through that afternoon, if the first 10 pages don't grab me, I might pick a different one. So those first 10 pages and then keep going because you just have so much to get through. Um, you're not aiming for your script to be one minute per page. Don't do that. Just accept that your script will average out to that. Very good point. Yeah. So it is if your script is 90 pages um, and yeah, timing it because an action sequence is going to take longer. It's and they've done, you know, there's been so many people who have written screenplays. It kind of averages out. So if you have a screenplay that's all action, that's there's no dialogue. Actually, it's still because. I'm trying to think that I'm not here. This how long that screenplay was, um, but it does average out. So there's that. Um, Inciting incident. Inciting incident is the thing that switches you from act one to act two. Usually happens about 25 to 30 minutes in, 25 to 35. That's see how there's a wide range. So that depends on how much action, how much dialogue there is. So 25 to 35 pages or minutes in, something happens. Ship hits the iceberg, whatever. There's something that shifts everything. Usually it has to do with the hero's journey and has to do with our, our hero, our protagonist. Something happens. And now you'll notice it if you don't know this already. Most of you probably already know this. but um, you know, you'll see it's the thing that, you know, happens as the shift, they get engaged, they get divorced, someone dies, someone's born, like some big thing happens right around them that shifts the story um, into the next act. And then act two, or the saggy middle, <laughs> is when we're developing all of the things. That's when, so you don't need to introduce all of your, all of your sub characters, you don't need to do, introduce everybody in that first act, you can use your second act for some of that, that's where your subplots are developed, that's where things start happening, builds start happening, until you get to, within act two, the point of no return. And this is following our hero until they get to a point, usually happens around page 80 to 100, kind of close to the end, but not the end. A lot of people um, think that this is the transition into act three, so, you know, and I, let me preface this too. We actually share this in the screenwriter program. There's a really cool document that shows all the different people that teach screenwriting and all the ways that they think the story works. They all subscribe to the three act structure, but this area gets very nebulous. Some people call this the crux. Some people call it the um, plot point two. Some people call it plot point three. Like there's a lot of different words for it. I like the point of no return because it's such a clear visual for people that, oh, this is to where the battle, there's no more. The, the protagonist has to fight the battle or they have to break up. It's the, it's the moment in the romantic comedy where they break up before they get back together, where they realize that they, they, it's not going to work out. Or it's, you know, it's the moment where they've just been pushed so far that they snap. That is the point of no return. They're gathering the troops. They're Braveheart's making a speech. All of that stuff is like right towards the end, but not the end. And then that moves us into... <laughs> So what am I doing? That gets so in my head. That moves us into act three, which is the way that we teach it, because I, I really think this is an easiest way to sort of visualize it. And 
in all the screenplays that I've read, it's the most common way that I see it. And that is that act three is just the resolution. It's after everything happens, it's the little wrap up in the end. It's usually maybe 10 pages or 10 minutes, really short. It's the battle's been won, whatever's happened. And now it's like the aftermath is act three. So a lot of people go, that can't be act three, act three. It's, just, it's not equal. Act two is the bulk of your screenplay in, in this formatting style. And we chose this formatting style um, because we're readers and that is the most common reader formatting style that I was taught to use from all of the producers that I've worked with. So, um, so yeah, so Climax is another one, yep. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying, yeah, exactly, Mariana. She's making good points, because in Fields books, they talk about the transition to Act 3 climax resolution. It can, it's very confusing. So we stick to it, we train it one way in the screen reader program, but we also show all the other ways that people train it so that readers are aware. And you might, as a reader, um, get hired by someone who doesn't subscribe to it this way. You just need to be aware and know that there's lots of different ways. The thing that does need to happen, regardless of what you call everything or where the actual page it all happens on, is that there needs to be a build to a point of no return, to a switch of some sort, and to a resolution. That all has to happen. Now, where it moves on the timeline um, depends on your story, depends on your style of writing, and you know it can all move. But those things do need to happen in every screenplay. So just wrap it up already. <laughs> Okay, and bolts. <laughs> Putting on the ritz. Okay, and bolts. <laughs> let's see how many. Let's see how many film references we can throw in there. So here's some little formatting stuff. Twelve point courier font. Bang. <laughs> there is a margin. There's one, 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 one and a half. So it's not exactly centered on the page. And the reason for that is um, back in the day is, <laughs> and you still see it every great once in a while. And actually, well. Let me explain it first. Is to leave simply to read, leave room for binding. It's pretty self, you know, self-explanatory. And now I was about to say that you know most scripts are, are digital, so it's not as necessary. However, I'm still past printed scripts all the time, and they're still bound, still bound with three holes. I didn't even put this with three holes and a brad at the top and the bottom, but not in the middle. Still a thing. And so, um, yeah, so that's for binding. But also sometimes when a screenplay does well or whatever, like you know when. It, they send out for the Oscars, they send them out, they're bound in the paperback. And so you want that extra side. So, um, yep. And then, so you've got that as your margins. You want the character's name in all caps. You want in the center. And I think it's 3.5, I wanna say. No, that's parenthetical. So maybe it's three inches from, them. I, I have, I know this. So I don't have to know anymore. So um, it's right in the middle, character in all caps. Um, and then the parenthetical, also known as Riley, we'll talk about that in a moment too, is right into like, you know, John, angrily, whatever. That's called a Riley, like John Riley. He says it Riley without inflection. Um, yeah, it is definitely still a thing. She buys printed scripts of movies and episodes. You like, that's awesome. That's one of the best ways to learn. And then the dialogue, two and a half inches from the left side, rag right. And then the pages are numbered in the top right corner, but not the first page, not the title page. It's not numbered and it's not counted as page one. And actually, if you really want to get technical, usually there's no page one either. No number one. Because um, we can see it's number one, I guess. Fade in. That gives us a clue. So those are kind of the nuts and bolts. I think most of you from what I'm seeing in here know this. So now we're going to go over <laughs> some do's and don'ts. And this is where it can get controversial. And people are like, I think you're right, right. If anyone who disagrees with me, <laughs> they sound like that. Rawr, rawr. No, I'm just saying that <laughs> I say it that way because it's like it, the argument to me is like such a waste of time. Do again, know thyself. The, the responsibility of how, I absolutely love this concept that there are a million hows. The responsibility of how lies on you, not me. I'm going to tell you a bunch of different hows. The responsibility of doing those hows is up to you. You can choose the how that you want to follow or not follow. So these do's and don'ts are the things that we've seen. If, um, yes, we will have a handout on this in just a moment. Um, the, this is from what I have seen, that the things I've seen that either help a script get past a reader or stop a skip script from getting past a reader because a reader is usually the first professional to see your screenplay and sadly often the last professional <laughs> to see your screenplay. Just saying. So. Um, 
put your contact info, please. I'm begging you on your screenplay. I can't tell you the number of times that I've done a pitch fest and they, you know, I ask for the screenplay, they give it to me and they don't put their name on it. Put your name on your homework, kids. <laughs> it is like, okay, so I don't know. And then, and then it's in a stack of 20 and I pull it out. It's like, oh, no idea who this is. Where it came from, nothing. <laughs> So put your name on it and even in a PDF file, because it's going to be downloaded and put into a big pack, you know, total folder of PDF files. That's even, almost even worse because you don't really don't know where it came from. Like at least usually in stacks on the floor, it, you know that that stacks from that pitch fest and that stacks from this producer or whatever, usually. Because <laughs> I'm super organized. You can tell, right? As I described this, I've had, I've had, <laughs> I actually, my son learned to walk on stacks, like, holding on to stacks of screenplays, <laughs> true story. Um, so you put your contact info at the bottom right corner. Um, after, so you've got the cover, it's right there on the title page. Title, final draft has this already laid out for you, but a lot of people don't fill it out because it's a, it's a, kind of a separate page from the screenplay. Fill it out, fill it out, fill it out. So um, yes, on so it's, you've got your title, it's right in final draft, it's listed there, but it goes in the bottom right hand corner. And the reason for this is that people bind their scripts and they put a cover on the front and, and an agent or whoever looks at your script, they just want to be able to go beep, lift up. <laughs> this is how quickly we are moving folks. They just want to beep, lift up that corner and see who brought this, where did I get this? And if it's, you have a representation, they go on there. And if you don't have representation, representation, that's totally fine. Then you go on there and you, you can, if you want to, you can put WGA, w, yeah, WGA on there showing that you've registered. Don't really recommend it. Again, this is controversial. Um, you can, I recommend that you register your scripts for sure. I don't want to get too much. I've never seen anyone steal anything. I don't want to go down this beat a dead horse path. Definitely register your script with the writer's skill. Copywriting it is also great. Go ahead and do that. If it, you know, I've never in my, all of my experience have seen anyone steal anything ever, never, not even close, not once. People got their own stuff they're trying to do. They don't, People aren't looking for your thing. And yet I see that in screenwriting groups all the time, even though I've, I've only seen it there. I've never seen it professionally in ever, never. And I've worked for many people in lots of different ways. So I know that it happens. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I've just never seen it. And I think holding on to things in that way is going to far more hold you back than help you. So you can put that, but what that says is I'm paranoid you're gonna steal my stuff. <laughs> so, you know, wait. <laughs> You can, it says I'm protected or it says you're going to steal my stuff. You decide <laughs> responsibility of how love this. So it was a long window. Hopefully they don't all take me that long. Contact info. Keep things brief. You, we, we get it. You don't need to. I mean, Terry Rossio and, and Ted Elliott, they wrote Pirates of the Caribbean and they started as readers and they talk about how they had so much action that they would put a line of dialogue that says, throw them overboard. So that if, oh, sorry about that. Stop. <laughs> I didn't know it would do that. It's on silent. Um, sorry. So um, it said throw them overboard so that they would know what's happening in the same case someone was not reading because a lot of people do do dial not producers, but I mean, not readers. Some producers, once they know they're in the project, they're just kind of figuring things out. They might do a dialogue only read. So they're just like skimming for dialogue. So keep a brief. You do, we get it. You do, people are smart. They're with you. So keep things brief. Stick to the rules. These rules that we're laying out here, I recommend that you stick to them. If you do break them, know that you're breaking them. Capitalizing sound cues. So if you have like a door slam, the gun shoots, bang, pow. It's like Batman. So you want a sound cue is capitalized whenever, sparingly, use this sparingly. Um, Yes, it's also too much. It's also too much risk of a lawsuit. Better to do it legally, let you slip at night and keep. So yeah, you can definitely. Um, it's it's ab. <laughs> I love that. Worrying about I love joy. Worrying about stealing scripts is far more prevalent than people actually stealing scripts. So true. Hashtag paranoia. But yes, it will help you sleep at night if you register it. It just you just don't need to broadcast that you did that. You know, protect yourself for sure. I'm not saying don't protect yourself, but you don't need to advertise. I'm protected. You're not gonna steal from me, Mr. Producer, because honestly, the producer will go like, okay, next. It's thousands of people out there. And actually know a director who really liked director, producer, and an amazing producer, knew, wanted to do this person's script, met with a production company, we're gonna, brand, first time writer, first time script, 
were and and they're very generous. So it wasn't like they were going to try to you know just you know do the script and not pay them much. One of the most generous producers I know in terms of paying their talent. And so they had already come up with a budget what they were going to pay this first time writer, and it was very very generous. And so they had the next meeting and the writer had lawyered up and wanted creative control and wanted a bunch of stuff. And they could have sold that for a screenplay, but instead they said, no, I need to be involved. And so they're like, okay, never mind. I mean, it was like, they didn't even meet. They said, oh, my lawyer's, you know, here's my lawyer. And they were like, okay, never mind, we're done. So, because there's just so much material out there. They wanted to give this writer a chance to do their work. That's another thing is if you have a piece, didn't want to go off on this, but it's important. If you have a screenplay that you absolutely don't want to give up, that you want creative control over, don't submit that to people that you want to produce your movie. You need to submit that as I am a producer and I am making my movie and do you want to support me in doing that? So that's a that's how you need to promote that as opposed to submitting it everywhere and then going, no, 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 I'm gonna be involved in this. It needs to be right out from the gate. And that was the bummer about this. It was a kind of a bait and switch where she acted as though, oh, you're gonna do my screenplay and then suddenly stepped in like, I don't know what happened, why she maybe, I don't know, maybe just suddenly got nervous or I don't know, because man, her script is in such good hands too. It was such a bummer because of all the producers I know, this is, yeah, hands down, the most generous and willing to want to help people. So opportunity lost. And so having that understanding of, you know, Quiet Place is a great example. If you guys read the origin story of the guys from Quiet Place, it's so inspiring. They entered a contest. They got their start by entering a contest that, that brought them out to Hollywood and then everything, the contest folded and all this disaster happened. And yet they still, what did they do? They kept writing, A. Eh? And then they got Quiet Place and they were gonna shoot that themselves. And John got involved and decided to help rewrite it. And they were like, yeah, man, <laughs> you know, do this. And now they're producing, writing their next one because they didn't go, wait, 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 wait. Because in my opinion, they took that screenplay and the original screenplay is way better than the movie in my, never to be humble opinion. But the guys were amazing. The movie's doing well. It's all such a great story. Read that. It's a really good, all that from capitalizing your sound, sound cues. <laughs> okay, wait, now I lost my mouse. Where am I? Here we go. Oh, it's over there. <laughs> I got it. I got it. I'm on it. Okay. Please, I beg of you, write in present tense. This is not a book. You don't say, John, walk down the street. We are right there with you. John's walking down the street. He didn't walk down the street yesterday. It's present tense. Everything present tense. Um, yep. Yeah, exactly. That's a really good point, Mickey. The more you follow these, the more experienced you will look. Um, and you also capitalize the first time we see any character, their name, or even if it's cop, the cop, the first time we see that person is capitalized only the first time. Otherwise, we are reading so quickly. If you capitalize your character's name and every time we see them, we think that it's a new Michael. <laughs> every time we're like, oh, it's another Michael. Like, cause we get so trained. It's totally Pavlovian where it's like, oh, new character. Like, it's like, I see someone in caps, they're new. So be very careful with that. And definitely do introduce them that way. <laughs> okay, those are the do's. Those are just some of the do's. These are the main do's. These are the do's where people go, oh, amateur. Like. These are the dudes that will get you judged. Um, but they let it go to get it made. Let it go to get it made. T-shirt. <laughs> Don't fudge the margins. These are all the ones that are like, please, I beg of you, do not do any of these things. But fudging the margins to make your screen screenplay longer or shorter is a very, very, very bad idea. One, takes about, oh, I don't know, one-tenth of a second for a, for a reader to spot that. We're reading all day long. I'm trying to think of a good like metaphor. <laughs> it would be like not noticing that the car has no steering wheel. I don't know. Um, do not put camera angles. You are not, even if you're directing this, well, if you're directing it, then maybe. But in general, just don't put the camera angles. Yeah, that would be the only time. If you know you are going to direct it, that's a whole different, that's a whole different conversation for one thing. But like I said, it's still gonna go past a reader. But if you are a writer, you are a writer. If you have an image that you want us to see in a certain way, you need to describe that in a certain way. It's lazy writing to go like, we pan in, like you're not, you are not the director, you are the writer. So we can say, um, her eye dilates. Okay, we know we have to be really close to be able to see that, right? You don't have to see close up eye. That's a, that's a sign of an amateur. 
So you want to get rid of all those camera angles. For one, it slows your screenplay down. It, it adjusts your page, page count because that page count that we talked about, same with the margins. If, if you fudge your margins, then your page count is off. Then the length of your movie is off. This is important stuff in terms of the long, you know, long haul of your screenplay, right? Do not include artwork. Um, you're going to read the Quiet Place screenplay. However, they have artwork in there because they were planning and they have camera angles too because they were they were already had a location. They were ready to shoot it themselves. So they had the artwork and stuff in there because they were raising money. It's a little bit different. But if you are going to write a screenplay that you want to give to a producer, contest judge in some way, past a reader, do not include pictures. Do not include cassette tapes. <laughs> That's just super hilarious kind of infamous story in Hollywood of a screenplay that went around with a cassette tape of the guy singing. Anyway, um, but do not, so you, you can add music. You can say, you know, 60s music, if it's period piece or whatever, you can say um, this kind of music plays, but if you specifically say a certain song that says to them, we have to get that song, which is a budgetary thing. So it's better not to include specific music. If you do want a specific song and you don't want to pay the rights for it, you need to have the character actually say the lyrics. So if a character is walking around, you know, like singing a song, all of a sudden my mind's a total blank, you know, is singing like, um, I don't know, someone give me a song, give me a song. It's karaoke night. So if someone's, <laughs> Totally blanking. If someone's singing a song in, in is coming out of their mouth, it's different than if um, you know raindrops. You fall. I don't know where that came from. You fall a lot. Then you don't have to get like you know Neil. I don't know who wrote that. Neil Sedoka, something like that. Sorry. So they can say the words to a lyric, and you don't have to have the sound rights. The minute that you play the song, you have to pay for the rights to that song. So it's better just not to include specific music in general. Again, know these rules. Responsibility of how. Don't use a different font. Don't use a different side, size of font. We get these hacks. We see these hacks. Please don't plagiarize. And, and it can be kind of plagiarizing is an interesting thing because it can sneak up on you. And there's a fine line sometimes between influenced by and plagiarism. And if you have not seen it, you need to see the movie When We Were, when we were Young. It kind of came and went. Um, Adam Driver, Ben Stiller, really good movie about this, about the line between plagiarism and originality and being influenced by and actually plagiarizing. And really, you know, did they steal it or were they influenced by it? And you see this in the music industry is a big one now as people are taking samples and that kind of thing. Really, I mean, we're in a whole new wild, wild west with that kind of stuff. So just be aware if you are referring, even if you're saying, I feel the need, the need for speed, right? That's, that's quoting another movie. That's fine. You can do that. You can have characters do that because the characters are top gun fans in their, in their character. That's fine. Just like I can sing, you know, can't touch this. <laughs> Where are these songs going? <laughs> what are you giving me here? <laughs> you're giving me some pretty out there music. I don't know. <laughs> this thing's too super tramp. <laughs> Sorry, that's an inside joke for Doug. Um, so, you know, please don't plagiarize. <laughs> so here's the handout. I'm gonna take a moment <laughs> while Doug gives you the handout. <clears throat> Oh, it's a secret word. Good. We're going to move on. Um, yeah, 80s rock plays on the stereo. And you can have the characters singing along. <laughs> Tug. Um, secret word. Shall we do another secret word? What's the secret word going to be? What is it? Okay. Um, I'm picking right now. It's very exciting. Here's good. Oh, not that one. We just did that one. Okay. There we go. The secret word is anti hero. See, I would have said anti-hero. <laughs> okay, you ready? I just like listening. The secret word is anti-hero. Okay. Use that for later. You'll need it next week. Save it for later. <laughs> oh, I'm silly today. Today, um, the unspoken main theme song for my script is what? <laughs> what is it, Alan? Alan is our very first screen reader. <laughs> I always have to say that whenever I see Alan. He is the very first person to sign up for our course. We owe it all to Alan. So you are going to get resources like this. So I'm not even going to go down this path of what screenwriting software should, should I go? What guy? <laughs> what guy? The guy in Supertramp? He does. Um, Auntie? <laughs> what? 
<laughs> Affleck, what are you, you guys are off the rails. I don't know, I'm not getting any of these references. Um, so we have a whole resource that we're about to give you that Hall, so here's a picture of it so you can see. And it's like several pages long and it goes through the pros and cons of all the different sources out there in terms of software. So we're not gonna spend a lot of time on that because, <sighs> sorry. Um, that's one of your resources. So you de definitely software is important. And again, what works for you? Writer's Duet is out there giving Final Draft a run for their money for sure. So it depends on what kind of, computer you have, whether you're mostly on your phone, iPad, you know, there's so much out there nowadays that really depends. So this resource that we're about to give you, we just gave you the rules that we were referring to. Ah, uh, sorry. Thank you, Alan. Uh, yep. Joy loves writer duet. See, she knows and she's writing a screenplay. That's very funny. I've seen it. Um, so Facebook groups, they are another great resource. Where might you find one? Oh, right, we're in one. Podcasts, <laughs> where might you find a good podcast? But actually on the page, I absolutely love that podcast. And you know, feel free in the group. Um, we can be heroes, I'm not gonna sing that. <laughs> um, podcasts are a great way to you know get information, listen. You know, We talked about in last week's session on Monday, felt like last week, we're, we were talking about improving your five and that is um, surrounding yourself with name, like with voices and people talking about things that inspire you. So you're constantly inspired by the people in your life, whether you know them or not, they, they can be, you know, podcasts or whatever, but improving your file. So there's the handout with the software options. Lots and lots of books out there. Save the cat. There's all kinds of them, you know, William Golden, got to read that if you're going to be a writer. So, um, so many different online courses. There's Udemy has some writing courses. There's Masterclass has some writing stuff. Um, and then there's also, we, I didn't even put this, but Bootcamp, there's Writer's Bootcamp, which I'm not even sure. They used to be really big, but um, I love David Bowie. Um, so I really think, um, you know, there's so many resources out there and we actually didn't put coaching on here, which is what we do. Um, I don't know of any other coaching, coaching programs where they actually coach you. Um, you know, actually one-on-one, -on -one, but the, these are just some of, there's so many resources out there. And the reason that we're doing, I want to, I keep repeating myself about this, but we're doing this pop-up Facebook group because we want you to write. We're trying to give you all of your tools and then go write. So we have, we're going to talk about other ways that you can stay involved with us if you want to do that, because we're kind of toying with this to see if this is what we want to do. And we think we do. So we're going to talk more about that on Friday, but we, we didn't want you to languish in a pop-up in a Facebook group. We don't want you to languish, read one more book before you start your screenplay. It's good to read, absolutely, and listen to podcasts. And especially if you get stuck, you know, take a break and read and whatever. It's all part of it. However, I think so many people spend so much time kind of, Brooke Castillo calls it how greed, the how, the how. I'm constantly going to suck up the how and not actually ever taking the responsibility of picking a how. Um, you can be magic. Festivals. Festivals are another way to um, really, you can learn a lot with all the panels and things that they do at festivals, contests. That's another way. Screenings. Now, I want to I want to differentiate between a festival and a screening. If you want to network, and this is another topic, but if you want to kind of get out there and kind of know people, screenings, man. And they do, they do, screen, I don't know who that was. They do screenings in, in, not just in LA and Hollywood, they do screenings now a lot in a lot of places. The person that goes to a screening is much different than the person that goes to a festival. People that go to festivals go to screenings, but a lot of people that go to, no, it's the other way around. <laughs> people that go to screenings go to festivals, but a lot of people that go to festivals don't necessarily go to screenings because screenings are the hardcore. Those are the people that are willing to take a whole night out of their world and go watch a screening of a movie that they've never heard of. That is a whole different level of film lover than someone who's willing to go to a festival where you see the movie that you're also going to see on Netflix. It's going to be out in the, you know, that it's going to get wide distribution and you'll see some other short films and little films and independent films and all of that. But a screening of an independent film, those are the hardcore people. That's where you're going to meet producers that are looking for movies. Someone's at the door. <laughs> it's probably a screener. So not answering it. Um, so here's the resource guide that lists everything in there. Okay. Now, what time are we at? Okay. We're doing good. We're doing good. You got the pro. Love it. Okay. So characters. 
and the things they say. Let's talk about that for a moment, shall we? Because talk about nuts and bolts. So we're going to tap on in on this. And this is where the work is. And this is where we did the subtext exercise yesterday. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment. But this is where the gold is, right? Is um, I'm glad that you've, I don't know who that is. So some of you, if you don't click on StreamYard, I can't see. So whoever's saying I have done those, I'm not sure who that is. Um, reprisal Friday. You seen it? You'll see it. Character analysis. Do a character analysis. And there's there's a lot of tools out there if you're an actor. You know, there's a lot of tools out there for how to be, you know, read. If you're a writer, read some stuff on acting. Bone up on what is a character analysis. Because if you do that on your screenplay, on your characters in your screenplay, you will be what they call an actor's writer. And, you know, actors' writers are some of the most working writers that there are. They get brought into pump up or punch up scripts a lot of the times um, to do dialogue rewrites, that kind of thing, because actors, you know, like screenplays that definitely, um, you know, are fun to do. Sorry, I got distracted by comments there. Um, do the cat, what we call the casting director test. Take a, think of a movie, like think of Rocky and then recast Sylvester Stallone and put Jason Bateman in there. Or, you know, think about movies and recast them in your head and look at how different they would be. So think about your own screenplay then in that regard. So if you take this exercise and you just recast a bunch of famous movies, it's really, and even if you do a more subtle change where you replace Rocky with Bruce Willis, which is, you know, a potentially a person that could have played that part but it still is a very different movie, right? Those, and that's a pretty subtle change. So it's like, you could, you know, one shift like that, and there is, I mean, Google it, it's really interesting to Google um, actors that were in the running for certain roles or actors that turned down certain roles. Uh, Will Smith turned down something. He was just on a talk show talking about turning down, oh, The Matrix. <laughs> Keanu's like, thank you very much. So it is like, and but what a different movie The Matrix would have been with Will Smith in that role, right? So he did Wild Wild West instead. <laughs> Don't! <laughs> Such a good story. Um, so then as dialogue, there's things that you can do. So, so I mean, that's kind of all I'm going to say about characters. Um, maybe that's, we're still, we're going to do one more topic tomorrow. And I've been sort of toying with what it might be. So I'm not sure what it's going to be yet, but we'll let you know. Um, Die Hard could have used Harrison Ford, although he might not have come up with the improv of Yippee Kaye. That was an improv moment, so you never know. Um, but it would have been a much different movie, right? Yeah, I don't know. I kind of like Bruce in that. I don't know. It's also subjective, right? So, and then also, um, yeah. Oh, really? That's a good one, Cindy. So, Sean Connery rejected Gandalf. <laughs> Sean Connery, that's a great one. I love you guys. This is so good. Um, <laughs> Shree. So, um, also, when you're writing dialogue, there's some we have some tricks we can give you of making your dialogue stronger. And one of those is using nouns as verbs. You know, you're going to Google it. Like that's an and you can take pop culture. That's it kind of can date your screenplay sometimes. But you can say, you know, oh, you know, you go all ISIS on me as opposed to you get violent, you get angry. You know, you can take pop cultural words and use them as verbs, and that's going to give your dialogue just just start thinking about that. Start thinking about when you have a verb, you know, like they ran down the street. Now start thinking about that in a in a pop culture way or in a just in a noun way. What's a noun that would be something that's running or something that's moving quickly? You know, where it's like um, they I want to say like they lear jetted down the street. See the difference? Like I'm taking a something that goes quickly, a noun of a thing that goes quickly, and I'm using that instead of the verb fast. So it really can, and that's not even pop culture. I mean, it sort of, I guess it puts it in, you can't say that if this character's living in the 1500s, but it's like, you can start to use, yeah, going postal, really good example. So you can start to use, um, dating yourself a little bit. <laughs> so you can start to use, see what I mean, how it dates though, but definitely it's a, it's a way to make your screenplay more interesting with dialogue. Um, and then also, these are two, the next two, go ahead and turn back that. These are, these are both ways to test your dialogue when your screenplay is written. And this is something that um, readers, like when you read a lot of screenplays, these things stick out at you. So if, if a character, if you could take two characters and you could switch their dialogue and it won't matter, then your characters aren't drawn. They're not drawn well enough to, to differentiate from each other. You should be able, and the other thing is just to take the character names off 
of a screenplay and, and then read it and see if you know who's speaking. And if you don't, then the characters aren't drawn very well. They're not distinct enough from each other. And that's a really common thing where you can't tell who's speaking. And you should be able to, and if, if we do, and we're gonna talk about this, I think it's not, um, we're gonna do um, a live read. And when, a char when, you, when actors read a screenplay, they will instinctively go, that's not my line, because they're, they're coming from a place of, would my character say, say or not say this? And so when you do, live read is so important, we're gonna talk about it in a minute, but it's like, that that moment that an actor goes oh they like they just really like they can't say a line that doesn't make sense to them so they will immediately know it readers know it as well where we're going that character wouldn't say that so you need to really be aware of that and really just like yeah really scratching the surface on this but that's you know knowing that about your characters being able to see if they can switch dialogue being able to see can you read these characters and their dialogue is you know, can I take that name off? And you're still going to know who said it. Very, very important. And so doing these subtext exercises, like the one we did yesterday and journaling, I, even though, I mean, this is the work to me, this is the real work is you knowing yourself and you journaling and you getting your voice, getting your right. The more that you journal, the more that you just write poems, the more that you write, whatever sparks you lyrics, the more that you just write, the stronger your screenplay will be. It might seem counterintuitive, but I really, really I'm passionate about it. And that's where the live read comes in. So important have people read this out loud. We're gonna show you, we're gonna do a live read here in the group. And we're gonna do this next Wednesday at five. We're gonna do a session and we're gonna have, we've got them cast, we've done a rehearsal, it's fantastic. You can see how you can do this online. You don't even need to meet in person to have people read your work. It's just, it, there's nothing like it to really get it across to you. And so next, next, Wednesday at 5 p.m. we're going to do a live read of a short play so you can see what that's like and you can hear there it's so nerve-wracking I can't even tell you the first time that I heard my stuff outside was out, out loud it's like Ugh. and you want to get over that's another reason to do it is you want to get over that before you're in screening you know you want to get used to hearing your words on stage and hearing your words come out of someone else's mouth it's a very if you've only written and you've never heard your words out loud I mean, you should even, that's another one you didn't put in here. You should read it out loud yourself for sure. Um, but if you've never heard an actor do your work, you need to do that. It's really important. So this was a subtext exercise. I'm just going to kind of point that out. Yes, Wednesday, December 11th. Did I say that right? Yeah. Um, at five, we're going to do that. We're going to stream it into Gatekeepers and into here. So um, we did this exercise yesterday, go back and look at it, but we talked about this idea of how you can uncover your character's identity. And then someone posted, it was a really good question, um, you know, how do we how do we write this into the screenplay? So I wanted to talk about that a little bit. So this is the work of like figuring out the subtext of your characters. And if you didn't, if you weren't there, go ahead and watch it, it's in the Facebook group. Watch the replay of that um, so that you can see this exercise of discovering subtext. So this is a really layered way to say a character has a belief of, you know, um, I'm a loser. And then you go into why do they believe that? They believe that because so-and-so said it, because they lost their job, because, and it's kind of just sort of circumstantial. And then you go into, well, why do they believe that though of these things? And then that, the, the, the words that are under that, the thoughts and things that come up under that are because usually it comes down to I'm unworthy, nobody loves me. It comes down to self-worth usually in some regard. So then that's the subtext now of this character. Now you're not gonna write, this is the behind the scenes work. This is not work that you're doing on the page in your screenplay. This is work that you're doing. You're taking a character and you're doing that character analysis and you're really defining the beliefs that your character has. Because if you do this work and you take the character and you say, okay, I'm going to take Luke Skywalker and I'm going to do this work of why does he believe these things? What, what are the thoughts going through his head? Who are the people that are influencing his thoughts? When he thinks I'm a loser, is he getting that because someone in his family said, you know, you were abandoned? You know, where it's usually a lot of, a lot of the times the negative thoughts that we have come from something someone else said. And the more that you dig down into your own subtext and realize, oh, wait, that's not even me. The more, one, you can deal with things in your own life, but two, you can find that subtext. This is the work behind the scenes. So when you do this work on a character, then when you go to write the dialogue, it's gonna be so much easier because you're gonna have an understanding of who that person is. I think so many writers, they just write their characters. They write them based on movies they've seen and this would be funny and like, there's no depth to it. This is the work. Some writers can do this intuitively. 
and some writers can't. And some writers do this intuitively and still do the work, and that's where you get your Oscar winners. So it's like whether you, you know, a lot of writers, and like you'll see, like um, I believe. I'm not sure if this is true of Aaron Sorkin. I know it's true of Tarantino that he started as an actor. And a lot of writers dabble in acting. A lot of the writers that write really rich dialogue are actors. That's very common. Um, it's a very common trajectory. Or they do a lot of theater because that's another place where in theater, we do a lot of character work and we do a lot of improving before. You know, there's a lot of exercises. They're sort of cliche, but that's because they work. So you do these exercises. There's, in theater, there's this more exploration into things you know it's a little more where we're digging deep and all that stuff and so when an actor comes from a theater background and you see holly hunter is a really good example of this and and jodie foster actually who was raised totally in, with no theater she did theater later in life but she was raised you know 10 baby she was copper tone child and she went into doing movies and she talked about directing holly hunter in home for the holidays and she said it was so interesting robert downey jr also in that movie was not raised in theater was raised you know like Jodie Foster in the movie world. So she said here she is a director now with only a film background. Well, at that point she had done some theater, but so she's directing these two actors that have a very different, you know, style. And she said, Holly Hunter in a scene, she said like, for instance, it's such a good example. If a fly comes into the scene, an actor that's raised, I don't know if Robert Downey Jr. would do this, but she's talking about Holly Hunter. Holly Hunter uses the fly. She's like, she bats it away. Whereas an actor that's grown up on a set might go cut, cut, there's a fly. See the difference? So this actor is like, you know, people that are come from this theater background, they're living this character. And that's what you want to do as a writer is live that character, you know, to some degree to where you're really, yeah, absolutely. You guys, I see you guys saying that you guys that are actors. Um, yeah, Ron Howard, really good example. So you're, you know, actually I'm gonna shake because we had this thing up here for a while. Let's put, let's give Joy, let's show Joy's coming. Um, so, um, you know, it really does help you if you're an actor for sure, but you don't have to be an actor. And, and even if you're not an actor and don't want to act in front of people, reading some books about acting will really help you as well. So that's what the subtext exercise. So it was a really good question. Like, well, how do I show that on the, on the page? Like, I'm not, he's thinking this, you know, but what, will, what it will do is it, you can put something like um, her lip quivers. And then her line is, you know, I'm not afraid of you. You see how, like, there's this depth there. So it will help you come up with these ideas of, I can get so much across. And not only that, that's also not a camera angle. But in order for us to see her lip quivering, we know it's going to be a pretty close shot, right? So by showing that her lip is quivering, we're showing her subtext. That's the work that you've done on the side when you develop this character. And now you're able to find ways to show what's going on inside. An actor will eat that up. Right, actors out there? If you see lip quivering, you're like, oh, thank you. As opposed to, we didn't even talk about this, the Riley saying, insecurely. <laughs> so Riley's are the little parenthetical that gives an actor direction. Um, I should have put this on the don'ts. It's, um, it's in the rules that it's a handout. Is don't include a bunch of Riley's. Please, I'm begging you. And don't, in oh, I totally didn't put this one either, but it's also in the rules. Don't include line readings, meaning, um, the line of dialogue says, um, I hate you and hate is in all caps. Don't tell the actor which word to emphasize. It's up to them. They're, that's their job. And they will emphasize the word that feels true to them. And that's what why they're there. So please, I'm begging you, trust your actors. They don't want to be told how to say every line. That shows that you don't trust that someone's going to be able to get your work across. And if they can't get their work across, your work across, it's because you're not writing it very well. If you feel the need to go angrily, then we're not getting across that this character is anger and is angry. And the character can be angry and say the line lovingly. It's actually scarier or whatever. You know what I mean? If a character says a line in a different way than what it actually is, that's the beauty of subtext. That will make your screen screenplay so much better. It is a sign of an amateur if you put angrily, happily, boot in every little, <laughs> see I can't even do it without mocking it. And that's what readers do. And that's why they used Riley. And that's why it's called a Riley. Riley, she says a Riley. So we don't need, they don't need that. They need you to write them rich characters. They don't need you to tell them how to speak. It's a big difference. That's my soapbox for the day. So go back and, and uh, watch that exercise. Hopefully it, that clarifies what we're talking about here in terms of you know what to do. So, whew, 103. 
It's just getting good. <laughs> this is all new. So coming soon, we got still so much to go. I mean, we're like, it's only two and a half weeks, but we are jam packing it in, right? So we still have some live exercises. We are going to do a live tomorrow. What would you guys like it to be about? Tell me, do tell. I think we'll post this, um, Doug, let's post that also in the Facebook group after this. Um, yeah, yeah, you can use a rally to describe a good point to describe who they're talking to if it's might be unclear if it's a thing, you know, you could say to Joan and so that, that, that we know that the anger that they're saying is focused on this one person. That's a good use of Riley. Not to Joan, angrily. <laughs> it's more about the emotion, I guess. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm not sharing that comment. Chocolates, life is like a bunch of chocolates. Um, for all the characters, um, I would do, you know, that's totally, again, that's up to you. Um, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure, I'm sorry if it's on or Anna. Um, if you do the BS, <laughs> if you do the BS analysis, <laughs> <laughs> do we do the BS analysis? Stands for belief system. I don't know what all y'all are thinking. Um, for the characters are just the principal ones. Start with the principal ones. But the, if you do them for your supporting characters, it, every character you do this exercise for is going to be a better character. And and an actor is going to be like, oh, I've got this small but juicy part, right? So it's like it's it just benefits you to do it as much as possible. And plus, the more you do it, especially early on, if you do this with your characters as you're first starting to write, it'll start to come, it's like anything, it's like driving. It'll start to become more natural to where then you are doing it sort of intuitively and you're sort of understanding who these characters are without having the need to do all of that. I mean, I know that there's actors that also, when they first started, they were doing big, big old character analysis and the prompt book where, I mean, we, I have a degree in drama, so I know this well, and I started acting my father was a director so I started acting very young and so you know where you put your subtext literally in the side margin so you know what you're thinking you know you do all this work as an actor but the more the actors work I, I know that that sometimes falls to the wayside because they don't need to do it as much it's just <laughs> it's chocolates man um uh, so it's like you know once you start doing that work it will become more natural do you give a character description oh really good question Facebook user <laughs> I don't know. You didn't. You have to click on StreamYard for me to see who you are. Do you to give a character description first time a character is introduced, or is that too much too Riley-ish? Really good question. I see a lot of debate about this. I think when you give a character description, um, you give what is necessary for the people to know. Characters are built on three things: the the things that they say, the things that others say about them, and the things that they do. That is the main way we know a character. So you, you shouldn't need a lot of description about that character. We're gonna get to know them by the words that first come out of their mouth. So, and now too, there's so much fluidity in casting. It used to be, you know, we really needed to describe. And now that's not the case so much anymore. You can be far more nebulous in who your characters are, unless it's something we need to know about this character. If for some reason it's important that they're eight feet tall, we need to know that they're eight feet tall right out the gate. If you want a certain visual, if the visual of the character walking in and they're wearing, you know, two different shoes, and they're, you know, they've got, you know, the hair, a bobby pin that's sticking out. So I'm already visualizing Bridget Jones, right? Like she's got a bobby pin sticking out. The, I absolutely love the makeup scene in the car. She did her makeup in the dark. You know, so we, when, if you want to see that, that's not her first description, obviously. But if you want to see a character and you want to know this character is a hot mess, you can use that to your advantage to describing, you know, that their bag is open and they're, you know, they're, there's a cord hanging out of it. You know what I mean? Like it it gives you this visual, as long as it's visual and entertaining and it isn't just like, you know, Sarah, early 20s, dark hair, super hot. You know what I mean? Like that's to me is the line. If it's good writing, it's good writing, it's good writing. Describe your character or not. It's not about whether you describe it. It's about whether the writing is interesting. So there's a big debate. Yes, no, now I'm confused. And because there's so much debate about it, but I really think it's, you know, do what you need, do what feels right, do what works well. <laughs> not kidding, kidding, not kidding. <laughs> you actually just, I know, I have, there's a tree right outside the window and I have everyone's so I'm like, oh. Or, um, so I hope that answers your question, <laughs> Facebook user. <laughs> um, yeah, so a brief description. I'll, it all should be brief for sure. Um, but again, it's kind of what, what works for your particular thing. Um, so we're going to do a live, the live read. We're also going to do a watch party on Sunday where we're going to take all three trainings and maybe even 
Mm, that would be awfully long, but maybe we'll do all three trainings um, together. So if we want to watch and I'll be there, we're going to watch them. I might stop and start to make extra comments based on things I'm seeing. So like I said, I read your comments in the Facebook group and then we do these trainings based on that. <laughs> so, and then on Friday, we're going to talk about productivity. Woo! Seriously, now you've got me. See, now, Jan, you got me looking for squirrels. Um, how to get it done. Let's get her done. We're going to talk about how to things, little hacks that you can put in place that will actually get it done. So anything else? Is there anything else, you know, that you want us to cover? Remember that this Facebook group and these trainings are about finishing your screenplay. They're not necessarily about, we'll cover this a little bit next time. They're not necessarily about what to do once your screenplay is finished. We now realize after this group that that's a new training that we need, that we are developing actually. So we're definitely going to develop that. But um, we are we are focusing on this, this pop-up group and these trainings are focusing on finishing your screenplay. So then Friday, we're gonna do productivity. And then next week, we're going to do some more. We're going to do the watch party where you can see everything all together. And we're just looking in the Facebook group. I'm sure we'll do some more um, rewriting polish. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Um, so, yeah, let's get it done, right? And then we'll do um, what I don't seem to do is get it done, right? And that's, I mean, I'm seeing a lot of that in the Facebook group. So we're just, we're all, we are going to do, um, polishing is a good one. I'll think about that. The other thing is, I feel like we kind of talked about character building. I think we I mean, that's such a huge topic. So um, wake up, motivate him. I'm actually in Evan Pagan's Wake Up Productive. It's pretty astounding. Um, can't see what is beneath anything else. Wow, that was deep. You guys are deep. So, um, but love to talk with someone what they think. Found some interesting, not sure what you mean by that. Rap. He found some interesting things in the group. Me. Um, don't get drunk the night before. <laughs> How did you know? I'm not a drinker. I don't really drink because I'm boring. I get a headache. I'm that guy. I'm like, oh, I don't feel good. But now I can just project myself forward into, oh, I'm not going to feel good. I'm going to not do that. Um, get the night drunk the night after. That's next Friday the 13th after the um, Facebook group closes. Then maybe we get drunk. Yeah. So um, yeah, let us know if you have other questions. That's what, um, we're going to do another training tomorrow that we'll decide on today and we'll post about today. And then um, you do your best writing, writing drunk. Yeah, that is an artist. Oh, but if I get sober, I won't be creative. Um, so there you have it. Um, do we have any other questions? Does anybody have any questions for today? Q&A. Why do you love this always come? So um, margaritas. Yay. Tequila. Tequila is my drink. So um, if I drink. Um, so now we're talking about drinking, which means I don't think you have any questions. <laughs> So this is awesome. I really, you know, I mean, obviously I could talk about this all day and I do every day. <laughs> My life is good. So if we are here today talking about this, life is grand, right? That we're able to take our time and our day to talk about this is the coolest life ever. So we are super excited to have you guys here. And Doug and I will talk and we'll post later in the day, like what we're going to talk about tomorrow. Um, <laughs> totally. Me too. I like, I get drunk looking at the labels. <laughs> it's awesome. So um, yeah, I had friends in, college that used to drink Seagram's and Dr. Dr. Pepper. <laughs> so gnarly. Um, see, now I said gnarly because I was just thinking back <laughs> on that whole thing. Yeah, I mean, it's a cheap date. So there you have it, you guys. Um, had so much fun. Let us know what other questions you have and um, coolest life ever. That's a great thing to end it on. So let's end it on that. And we will be back in the Facebook group tomorrow. Keep posting, keep sharing. We'll share some more. I found some more YouTube videos. I mean, we have our Hollywood Gatekeepers YouTube channel as well, but we'll keep keep doing that. So, all right, you guys, super cool. Love it. Tomorrow, um, that will be at four. Yeah, so tomorrow we'll do some kind of Facebook. We'll do a Facebook Live at four. Just don't know the topic yet. Exciting. The secret topic is, <laughs> you guys are great. Robert Tyson. okay. Best life ever. I'm going to end it on that one. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. We will see you manana. Yay.